It's my firm belief that producers are out here trying to make money and they're having quite a hard time of making this money because the market is so saturated with all of the beat makers and people who are trying to rise as producers. Now, producers and songwriters together are staying broke because of this. The producers are going off on their own and they don't really understand how the producer and the songwriter was supposed to work together as one unit. This all puts you at a disadvantage when you're trying to achieve that desired result of a placement on television and film or of a placement on an album with an artist. All artists don't write. They always need inspiration from others. With that being said, in order to graduate from the beat maker status to a producer status, you have to combine forces with the songwriter and you all have to work together to make this happen. This should be the case. Somehow this got lost in translation due to technology and the internet, but I'm going to bring it back together, bring it back to your attention so you can hopefully understand this and build your team so that you can build an empire so that people have to reckon with you in this game coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey, Music Money Makers, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham, and I gotta tell you, I don't want my producers to be broke out here, and neither do I want my songwriters to be broke out here. And quite frankly, I'm making this video because I don't hear much of this camaraderie happening anymore like when it was when I got started back in 2005. So, with that being said, let's hop in. Now, you both are songwriters in the publishing world. Let's get that straight. Music producers, a.k.a. music writers, equal composers, a.k.a. AKA equals a songwriter. Songwriters, a.k.a. lyric writers, equal authors, which equals songwriter. In the eyes of the publishing world, you both are songwriters. So the songwriter equals one body, which equals you are all producers. You produce a body of work to be sold to a customer. Get it? See, back in the day... This is what we had to do. If we wanted placements, beats were cool. This started really happening when the producer could do things on their own, on the you know MPC, and the record companies just started doing things separate. The artists went their own separate way. They were like, I can write, just give me the beat, and yada, yada, yada. This separated the songwriter and the producer from really working together because the artist said, I need to get paid because this record industry is going down in flames, and I need to get paid more. But this caused music to suffer as well. Quality songs that could last, that would have a lasting value. You get what I'm saying? So, you're nothing without each other. If you're strictly a songwriter, you need the producer to display your talent. If you're a producer, you need the songwriter to write on your tracks to increase the value of what you're producing and selling. I'm going to break, I mean, you all have to come together like Captain Planet. Like you're the Planeteers right here. And I'm going to explain this, what, one, two, three, four, five person duo in a minute later on in the video. But the producer needs the songwriter to write on the tracks to increase the value of what you're producing and selling. I'm going to show you what I'm saying. Doubling your value. If the songwriter can sing, catalog your music like albums. A singer-songwriter lets you double the value of music in pitching sync agents because they demand more full songs over beats. I know that beats get placed in television shows. I get that. But the agent needs a full song to take the place of that really expensive song from the record label. Now, pitching to record labels. This guy at the record label right here, he needs a hit. He doesn't need just a hit beat. He needs a hit. And it would be better if that hit came in the door with a song attached to it. That's what they're really looking for. Pitching the publishers. A publisher, a beat is cool to a publisher, but it ain't great. It's like the publisher will say, all right, let me get it to my songwriters. But you come into a publisher with songs already done, pre-cataloged, ordered and everything, and they're like, man, let's do a deal right now today. This could be leverage to help you keep funding your career. You could do a song deal. It doesn't have to be a term deal. What about pitching to advertising music agencies? How are you going to pitch just beats to them? Let me tell you something. The beats that get placed in television shows and on advertisements aren't coming strictly from sync agents. They're coming from libraries. And producers, you got to do deals with libraries. But if you want to ante up the value on your song... On your beats, you add a song to it, 
and we got a we got a serious thing to reckon with here. Why is this? Because people want full songs more than beats alone. It just is what it is. Look, two heads are better. They, here comes Captain Planet again. Two heads are better than one. There are two of you, and both of you should be pitching the song. After you negotiate the terms of the producer agreement for that song, two sales personnel are better than one. Now, a lot of this is totally unheard of for you. Many times, the songwriter will, by default, say, Hey, Mr. Producer, you're the one that's producing this thing. You go sell it. I got to tell you this. For me, when I got my checks... They actually came from my songwriter that I was working with, who's my friend, who sold the records or licensed the records for me because she was in L.A. and I'm, I'm in Atlanta. The music we're making is pop, and it's not popping off in the trap. It's popping off over there where they listen to pop all day and sunshine and all. Well, it's raining now, but sunshine in L.A. You know what I'm saying? Two heads are better than one. It just is what it is. Now, pay your songwriters, producers. Producers, there's nothing worse than to place a song with a songwriter and not give them a cut of the producer's value, advance. Excuse me. You will lose a talented ally in your tool chest for this. If your songwriter produces vocals or writes and demos the entire song, cut them in on the producer's points. This is something that in the hip-hop world we don't do. In the pop, in the country world, this is, this, this is happening. So when they come to the hip hop, they're like, when they come to the hip hop world, like, what is this? Like, what you're not paying? I just put in all this record. The song is what got it sold, and you don't cut me in on anything. See what I'm saying? So you can't just take money from your crew. It's like you, if you're the general producers, and the whole crew is waiting to eat, but you say, nah, you can't eat. Just eat on your royalties. I, I got all this all mine. If you do that. You're not going to have a crew for very long, which is going to put you back in the place of just slanging beats again. The songs is what's going to help you get through the door. Because I'm telling you, not a lot of people are writing songs like that anymore. The songwriters are trying to turn into the artists because they're just not getting a fair shot. The music business is suffering from that. And if artists got quality records, then maybe we could have songs that lasted, you know, a little bit longer now instead of like, you know, five seconds. So there you go. Now, assembling a team in the cookhouse, quadrupling your value on a 5% deal. I'll tell you about that 5% in a minute. So, we got to have a team to make this happen. Yes, we can have the producer, we can have the songwriter, great. But what does a real team look like? Here's team scenario number one. Okay, you move me. Well, I'm good, you can see. Two producers. This equals five voluntary song pluggers. Remember when I said, let's go back. I said two heads are better than one. Two sales personnel are better than one. If you can agree that everybody is allowed to help slang this record, then all of these people can slang for you. Not the engineer, though. Okay? Five voluntary song pluggers. That song is going to get sold in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Of course, there are other processes you need to put in place for protection. But the, the odds of that song getting placed are a lot higher than just having one producer try to slang it and create at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And then we break down the points. At a 5% deal, you split up the points. Producers get two, songwriters get two, and then your vocal producer gets one if you have this. But if you have a team of two producers, two singer-songwriters, male or female, preferably one of each, right? Because it just works. One vocal producer and one engineer slash rough mixer. It doesn't have to be great, but they need they need to be able to deliver some decent mixes for you and in a timely fashion. You put this team together. You allow everybody to sell. You split the points. And this is what the producer agreement between you all will look like or the agreement between you all will look like when you're doing records. Okay, and you can build a custom split sheet for this. All right. Uh, once you do this, placements are going through the roof because now you have a team and you're crafting a sound for that team. And because of that, everybody's going to win, including the engineer. Let's look at scenario two. One producer, two singer-songwriters, one vocal producer, one engineer, rough mixer. Four voluntary song pluggers. Let's say you throw one real song plugger into the mix with a 10 or 15% commission. Producer takes two points. Songwriters take two points. Vocal producer takes one point. 
everybody's getting paid in this scenario, but now you got more help inside of the cookhouse. So y'all cooking up. You know what I mean? Now, try and do this with one producer by, your, by themselves. It's a very hard job. When I was going at it, I had, how many songs? One, two, three, four. I had five songwriters at one time getting songs placed. At least attempting to do that. Some went to sync. Some got placed on independent artists. I got paid, but it worked. I increased my odds this way. You could also increase your output this way. If you got two producers collaborating together and everybody's collaborating, this is a production team, by the way, then your odds are higher. They're a lot higher to get more placements and to get more options. You see what I'm saying? This is why this works over the single beat maker. Any day. This adds more value to what you're trying to do. Because if you got a team of people back here cooking up in the cookhouse and your product is dope, we winning now. Because now, not only do you walk in the, deal, in the meeting with beats, but you're walking in with stacks of songs. These are complete songs ready to go. They can be altered, but they're ready to go right now. Listen to it. Every week, you come back to your A&R Connect, right? You come back to the, you're the plug coming to the other plug. You come back every week with these beats and these songs, whatever your output is, five a week or whatnot, whatever y'all are doing together, and they're getting placed, you're now in the studio. This takes a lot of cooperation. All heads have to be cool to make Captain Planet, you know what I'm saying, come together. But if you make Captain Planet come together every week and you're in the meeting every week, what do you think you're going to be? You ain't even going to have to pitch no more. They're just going to tell their writers to go in the studio with you. I mean, their artists to go in the studio with you. You know what I'm saying? And this is what a lot of you aren't doing. So you got to combine your powers to make Captain Planet happen. Captain Planet goes in the meeting. He's the hero. Going to take your solutions down up to $100,000. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You winning now. You winning. The cookhouse is cooking up, cooking up that good, good, and we winning. Well, what if we both get it sold at the same time? You start a bidding war between these fake M. Bisons right here. You know what I'm saying? It's just going first come, first serve, first come, first serve, highest bidder. That's it. But you want a bidding war. That's, that's what you want. Well, I thought a song was 50% lyrics and 50% music. That's what you thought because you were a beginner. Only newbies get told that lie. You especially won't get that working with a team. So you got to be cooperative in this space. But this is going to get you more opportunities, which means more money. Because now when you go in with a team, it's like, yo, we got access to business affairs. We can see what's really going on with this money now. You know what I mean? Eventually you'll get what other producers used to get back in the day. You'll be paid. For your time in the studio, which is what you want. See what I'm saying? Now, where can I get a producer agreement? I'm glad you asked. This is coming soon to the 60 day record label course, or you can grab one from the producer contract course below. Uh, but yeah, you can get one from me. They're there. Now, that producer agreement is not going to be the agreement that you all have together. But you all, all of the whole team needs to know how to read a producer agreement if they're going to be together and they're going to do business because they're going to need to know what these points are. They're going to need where need to know where the song pluggers want to get their commission, right? And they're going to need to know who they're, they're selling to. Get what I'm saying? So purchase the 60 day record label course below. It's going to go in depth. If you're producing and songwriters on building your LLC, especially for your personally ran publishing company. Okay. I don't really do song trust over here at all. That's only, that's last, that's the, the, the final option. If, if just need be, you need to do that, do it. But I, that's not what we do over here because you can go around them. Okay. So grab the 60 day record label course, build out your production companies with it. If you're building a record label, you can do it with that as well. You get what I'm saying? 
Now, download the 60-day record label below if you just this is just out of your range. I got you. Download the audiobook. We'll still walk you through it. Book a call with me. Let's develop your strategy. You know what I'm saying? Because outside of you just knowing this, it is going to take someone to walk you through these steps so you understand. But once you understand these steps right here, and you booked a call with me, and we talked about it, we strategized, you should be able to move forward with success. All right? With that being said, now that you understand how producers and songwriters kind of screw themselves, they kind of stay broke, you got to bring it together. There was a division that happened. This division must be closed together so you can raise the value as a team of your songs together. Once you do this, the industry will open up to you. You won't be bitter. You won't be complaining anymore. And that's what we want. Because if you make music, you should always make money. Music Money Makers, download the 60-day record label, visit musicmoneymakeover.com, book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.